Praise the Lord. Welcome to Walking in Faith and Victory Broadcast once again. We're so glad you joined with us. We are uh, talking about walking in the love of God. Praise the Lord. This is number four, and we should close it out today. And uh, let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. We're so grateful for your love and your presence and your, lo your word. We love your word, and we love you, Father. We ask that you allow your love to uh, go into the room, right where people are, listening at the sound of my voice. And may they be encouraged today, strengthened today, and your love surround them in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, I want you to turn with me once again to 1 John chapter 4, <clears throat> verse 16. And it says, And we know or have known and believe the love that God has for us. You know, if you don't realize how much God loves you, it's hard to understand the love that can operate through you. Amen? Once we get a revelation that God loves us with an unconditional love, there's no conditions to his love for us, it really will bring a strength and help us step into an arena of love. Amen. And we have talked about <clears throat> our relationship with God that will affect all the relationships with those here around us on the earth. And we've talked about how to perfect the love walk. Amen. It's important that we understand how to develop and be very skillful in the love of God. And we talked about uh, not being a human love, which is conditional, but that God is uh, you can't separate God and love. Why? Because he is love. And we talked about, too, also that uh, the love of God is the root of all the good things of the kingdom of God, all the miracles, all the signs and wonders, everything that God can do for us. It was demonstrated by his love, and it is the root of of every blessing in your life, every empowerment, every realm of the anointing. It is a route to cause the, the very assignment on your life or ministry to come to pass, the love walk, amen, the love of God. Um, and so we've talked about it's not, it's also, it's not easy to love the unlovable when somebody's ugly towards you uh, or may have harmed you or uh, brought some kind of trauma in your life or offended you, uh, caused, uh, you know, as a trap of Satan to get you into strife. And, and know this, that the minute you get into strife, you step into an arena of uh, unforgiveness. And that's where Satan wants us to not forgive. The Bible says if you don't forgive others, God will not forgive you. It's not that he doesn't want to or forgiveness is not available. It's just that we tie the hands of God. We can tie and short circuit the love of God in our life by staying in unforgiveness. You know, scientists have proved that most sickness and diseases come, especially cancer and arthritis, comes by unforgiveness. Those who refuse to operate in God's love and forgive others. Also, we become a target of the devil. He begins to target us with the spirit of deception. And, and it's a dangerous place to be. And, and also to those of you that can be empowered by God and his love and experience the anointing and miracles and things that he wants to bless us with, uh, it short circuits that. It, it ties the hand of God, like I said earlier. Amen. So, uh, we must learn to walk in the love of God daily. I want you to turn with me to 1 Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians, chapter 3, verse 11, chapter 3, verse 11. If you'll turn there, please grab your Bible or maybe your uh, iPad or whatever like I have here. I have Bibles and, and everything, but um, I'm using my ad, iPad for it's easier and quicker that I can get the gospel to you, amen, or, the, or be able to preach and teach the word. So it says, now God himself and our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ 
direct our ways unto you. Amen. Let's continue reading through 13. And the Lord make you to increase, to abound in love. So if increase is going to come, we're going to have to abound in love and towards another. So the proof that we're operating in the love of God towards God is that we have love for others. When we love others, we're loving God, especially those of the household of faith. And it says towards all men and even as we do towards you. So Paul here is saying, listen, I've loved you. I was willing to sacrifice everything and even go into prison and be beaten and be shipwrecked and, and being judged wrong by many. I do it for the love of God. And, and the proof I love God is I'm willing to stay in ministry and willing to count whatever it takes to, uh, get the gospel to you. Why? Because of love. Amen. So we can learn from the life of Paul. We can learn from the life of Christ and all, all those who willing to sacrifice everything. Amen. To share the love of God it says to the end, he may establish or establish your hearts unblameable in holiness in holiness before God. So what he's saying here is <clears throat> enable for us to be established in life. We need to make sure that we stay in love. Amen. Our hearts must be unblameable, meaning there's no uh, area or arena that we have unforgiveness. We have strife or offense in our life because it hinders our walk with God. It hinders our, our holy standing with God. Amen. Holiness before God it says, even our father at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, which all with all the saints. Amen. So God's coming back one day and he's going to come back with the saints. Amen. And, uh, will we be found blameless? Well, we need to start that now. Not when he comes back, uh, we need to, uh, uh, determine in our hearts and make a clear resolve that we're going to walk in love every day. That's what he was talking about. Walking in love every day. It's something that you decide to do. So Christ, he, he will return for a people who are made walking, who have made walking in love a lifestyle. Amen. Uh, that doesn't mean they're not going to make heaven, but you know, it's going to be real hard to receive forgiveness from God and the benefits of God if we choose not to walk in love. You know, I haven't experienced some where some people, uh, I mean, you know, you think of what some of these dictators have done around the world to murder and kill and destroy whole generations of people. Uh, I have never experienced it. I've, I've ran into people where they're, you know, a uh, part of martyrdom and, and, uh, genocide. My wife is Armenian. And so, you know, their, their nation ex experienced, uh, genocide, you know, from, from another nation that hated Christianity and, uh, they would kill them and kill their wives and, or women and children and, and did it very cruelly. Um, and I noticed that there's a generation, they won't forget it. And, and if you mention a certain nation or a race of people, uh, they just, man, they almost get in a rage that you could see the disdain and, 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 uh, unforgiveness and they refuse to forget. Um, <clears throat> you know, we can look at history and see that our nation wasn't perfect and neither is anybody else. Uh, we can look at some of the things like slavery and things that we've done uh, over 200 years ago in our nation, that was, that was a bad time. That wasn't good, but we can look at it at, in history and say, you know what? We don't have to do that again. We don't have to tear down every statue, wipe out every, uh, you know, constitution and rewrite our nation. No, we just need to say, you know what? That statue there can remind us of where we missed it. But that doesn't, that doesn't mean we use it as and weaponize it to hurt the next generation. See, when people use things 
to hurt other people. They do it because of hatred, unforgiveness, uh, and, and they got an agenda. In most cases, it, they're being led by the enemy with an agenda to hurt somebody else. And, uh, uh, but we don't need to weaponize unforgiveness for the next generation. We need to learn to forgive. And true forgiveness, now listen to what I'm going to say. True forgiveness is forgetting. Not forgetting the past mistakes and just, and just rewrite everything. No, we can point to mistakes and say, I'll never do that again. Or point that out to the next generation, don't do this. So you don't harm somebody else. But at the same time, in, in the biblical reference here, God is saying that we can have true forgiveness by forgetting. And that's what true forgiveness is. God does not remind us when we sinned. Uh, if, if we sinned yesterday and we ask God for forgiveness, he's willing to forgive and forget. He doesn't say, hey, do you remember when? <laughs> uh, we'd be sitting here for hours remembering when. Because who hasn't sinned and had multitudes of sin? But yet God takes our sin and not only washes it and makes us whole and calls us righteous, he forgets about our sin. And that's what true love is. True love is to never remember wrong. Hallelujah. God takes our sin and casts it into a sea of forgetfulness. Uh, casts it as far as the east and west and they never meet again. That's what forgiveness is. Forgiveness is forgetting. And you say, well, pastor, how do I do that? That's just hard. Well, <clears throat> it takes faith. Faith is the empowerment we need to walk in love. We love by faith and walk in faith because of love. We cannot, we cannot walk in true forgiveness and love without faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. But with faith, we can do all things. The Bible says nothing's impossible to them that believe. So forgetting is possible. And I've heard people say, well, I forgive them, but I'll never forget. Well, I want to tell you something. That's not forgiveness. Forgiveness is forgetting. Letting the past go. If you hang on to the past, you'll never have a future. If you refuse to forget, you're not truly forgiving. And so we must walk in a daily love. Sometimes it takes one step at a time and one step out of faith. But we can forget. And God can empower us to forgive and forget. Amen? And so how do you do that, Pastor? Well, daily recognize the greater one lives in you. God lives in you by way uh, of the Holy Spirit and based on the work of what Christ has done for you. You and I are empowered by the greater one who lives in us. John 4, 4 talks about that. The love of God is more powerful than any nuclear satanic force or nuclear weapon in the spirit that Satan can use to bring destruction in our life. The love of God, the greater one that lives in us, will give us all the power we need to forgive and to forget. So as we walk <clears throat> to perfect our love, that means to develop our love. The word perfect means mature. So you can mature in your love for God. Amen. And you can experience an immediate positive results by cultivating the love of God in your life every day. Just go to, uh, go to the greater one who lives inside of you and, and let him empower you from the inside out. And it'll change every circumstance, every situation, every wrong deed. And you come to a place where when you see somebody, you won't remember the wrong because you've, you, you've been empowered by the greater one inside of you to forget the past. Amen. Well, thanks for tuning in today. This was, this was number four and, and walking in love. Uh, this, this subject will never end. We can preach the rest of the year on this because we need it. Love doesn't remember wrong. Love doesn't gossip. Love doesn't envy. Love is not jealousy. 
It, it, doesn't, it doesn't remember these things and holds them against another person. It forgets it and lets it go. Amen. And God can do that in you and through you. You say, Pastor, I need some help today. Well, let's pray about that. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask that you would empower them or you have empowered them because the greater one lives in them. And all things are possible to, to them that believe. So the impossible looks possible. Why? Because the greater one lives inside of us now to empower us and to give us that victory right now and success to walk in love every day of our life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, thanks for tuning in today. Make sure, sure you tune in to the next broadcast. And uh, <clears throat> we're excited to be able to bring the Word of God and we'll let you know we love you, we appreciate you, and call you blessed.